Good morning. Greetings. This is TK Trav, aka Travis Magus, here with LVX777. I hope that you find yourself in a very good place this morning, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. One of my favorite quotes from Bobby Hemet is, this shit is over. And I think it's pretty well understood that most nobody understands what that means. We usually think that that just means that um, all the world's falling apart and all that's left for us is to watch it burn. But that's a pretty horrible way to live. I mean, horrible is my own value judgment, but it doesn't really serve any hope for any type of way out or any type of success. And one thing that must be understood is that the spiritual path is having one destination, and that is awareness of the soul. Now, it can be very difficult to describe what exactly the soul is, because the soul isn't anything that's manifest, so there's no way to describe it. Probably the best way to describe the soul is to describe what it is not. There's actually practice for that. It's called neti neti. Not this, not that. The more that you understand, as far as the details, the wider your comprehension can be of the subject matter. This is why study is important. Not because books make you smart, but because the concepts that are presented to you in the text challenges your frame of thinking, and it allows you to grow and expand quite literally. Because without knowledge and concepts to test your awareness of reality, you're pretty much just stuck in one place. And if you're stuck in one place, then it's very easy to develop some type of fatalistic point of view where you think, oh, this shit is over. Nothing nothing good is coming after this, right? But that's that's not the most efficient way to think or live your life if what you're actually seeking is an awareness of the soul. So, when it comes to awareness, awareness is something that must be practiced. It's something that must be exercised. Because without that exercise, then how do you even know what you're doing? Meditation is actually a practice of awareness of the soul. Without meditation, it's extremely difficult to grasp an awareness of the soul. Everything that exists has, at some deep layer, a soul. Now, depending on how close the access to that aspect of the individual is, has everything to do with your refinement, with your refinement of awareness. Just like you have people who are wine tasters and coffee tasters, right? You have some people who drink wine and they're able to taste the subtle notes and expressions, the subtle fruit, or maybe even the container, the wood that the wine was stored in. See, that's called refinement of taste. The average person wouldn't taste all that, they'll just drink the wine and get drunk. But someone with refinement is able to detect the subtle notes in the wine. Likewise, just like the wine has subtle notes and textures and flavors, so does what we call a human. You've got multiple layers that you find yourself existing in, that you find yourself aware of. Most people are only aware of the very dense aspect of the self, and of course that's the five senses. But in order to really grasp this information, we must, must, must consider that there are two poles. There's two poles of existence. At one end of the spectrum we have consciousness. The other end of the spectrum, we have energy. For this discussion, we'll call it matter. Because matter is the lowest vibrating, most dense aspect of energy. Even science tells us that what we believe is solid, it isn't actually solid. It's just vibrating at a rate that's very slow, and our five senses is able to detect it in a certain kind of way. Now that's very crucial because all this depends on time. 
If there was no aspect of time, there would be no movement and no change. If there's no movement and no change, then everything exists as it is in a potential state. You understand? See, this is the problem that causes a lack of refinement of the self. Because we identify with matter, because we identify with the dense physical body and only with what the body can perceive, we're limited to time and we're limited to space. Here's the problem with that. Time and space have a beginning and an end. So if you identify yourself with a race, a gender, a political party, if you identify yourself with anything, you're essentially identifying yourself with something that doesn't exist. Do you understand that? Because everything that you identify with has a beginning point and an end point. And if we were to extend our awareness beyond time, then everything that ends and begins is resolved into the one. The same way that we can see the development of the Marvel Universe from Stan Lee creating Spider-Man, which no one believed in. Nobody wanted that character of Spider-Man to have his own series. The producers didn't care for it. That was the beginning of Spider-Man. Before that, he existed in a potential state in whatever inspired Stan Lee to create Spider-Man. Through time, Spider-Man is becoming America's favorite hero, maybe even the world's at some point, with all the movies and the different ways to explain the metaverse and this, that, and the third. There's going to be an end of Spider-Man one day, maybe in a hundred years, maybe in a thousand years, we'll completely forget about what a Spider-Man is. At that point, it returns to its potential state. So for you to identify with anything that's manifest, you're identifying with something that doesn't really exist in the big scheme of things. You're identifying with something that is extremely temporary. And to be honest, if your focus is evolution, all of your attention should be on things that are going to assist your expansion of consciousness or your awareness of what we call soul. Soul also being the complete and total container of all potentiality. So I talked about these poles. At the highest end, we've got consciousness, pure ultimate consciousness. And here resides the patterns and the potential for everything that can ever be. And below that, at the very other end of the pole, we have matter, we have energy. And this contains the expressed aspect of anything that can ever be. Now everything expressed has a beginning and an end. And everything expressed was once a seed in a potential state. So you are an expression. All the things that you identify with, your race, your gender, your body, the ideas and the concepts that you use to define yourself to other people, all of these are temporary things. And one day they will no longer exist. Whole races have come and gone out of existence. Whole cultures have come and gone out of existence. Do you understand that there are cultures that you've never heard of and never will? There are races and people that you will never hear of. That's the nature of this plane of existence. Temporary. And the more that you can come into an understanding and an awareness of the intrinsic temporal nature of everything manifest, the more that you'll understand that you are not that. Remember what I said earlier, neti neti. It's very difficult to explain what the soul is because the soul isn't anything that is manifest or anything that is expressed. So the easiest or at least most convenient way to explain the soul is to identify what it is not. And when you do that practice, what you're actually doing, what you're actually doing is you're analyzing what is matter and what is energy. And when you're able to direct and point at what is matter, what is energy, what is expressed, what is temporary, you're also telling yourself subconsciously, unconsciously, the soul isn't any of these things. The soul isn't the physical appearance. The soul isn't any concept that I'm emotionally tied to. All these things are temporary. And it may hurt your feelings, but that's the way it is. 
No race is superior to another because all of them are temporary. No culture is superior to another because all of them are temporary. Yet they all are expressed from a potential state, which is ultimate consciousness, which is the soul, which is what we should be striving to come into an awareness of if we call ourselves spiritual students or practitioners or whatever, whatever title you want to give yourself. The ultimate goal should be coming into an understanding and a realization of what the soul is, awareness of the soul. This is what we exercise during meditation. During meditation, you're still, you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. Now here's the thing, there are transcendental meditations. Many of them I practice and I even teach in my course. There are practices like Tatwashuti. There are practices like Lesser Banishing Ritual the Pentagram, Vipassana, right? Kaisterium. There's so many different types of practices, but here's the thing. There's a reason that you're doing them. The reason that we do those practices is so that we can refine our awareness. If you're paying attention to this talk or the talks that I've had, you'll start to see that these same things that I've been saying over and over should help to expand your awareness of what's actually going on here. These transcendental meditations serve to expand and refine your awareness so that you can literally experience the fact that you are not the body, you are not your thoughts, you're not your personality, you're not your culture, you're none of the things that are expressed. You're something that is unexpressed and you can only come into a realization of that through stillness. Now here's the thing, liberation, enlightenment, these things aren't anything that you achieve. They're nothing that you work for. Yes, we say do the work. And what that means is take this seriously and apply yourself to understanding these concepts. It's not enough just to listen to me. It's not enough just to read these books. You have to contemplate the subject matter. So do the work means contemplate the subject matter. But that should lead you to a place of awareness of what you are and what you are not. And see what happens in liberation is that you begin to release the things that you erroneously thought were you. You're able to practice what's called non-attachment. Non-attachment is more than just not being emotionally affected by life. Non-attachment is a true and clear perception of the idea that you are not the body. And when you come into that realization, you start to notice that things begin to slow down. Time begins to slow down. The expression of matter begins to slow down because your awareness and perception of what reality actually is starts to affect everything else around you. And what you'll notice is it's not actually being affected. You're just understanding what it actually is. One of the ways that we describe nature and her original name, which is, or one of her names, which is Prakriti, one of the ways that we come to understand nature or Prakriti is through different levels. Now, in Kabbalah, we talk about the four worlds. We talk about Asaya, Yetzirah, Bria, and Atzaluth. And what these are is an, are expressions of awareness. They're not actual planets somewhere. They're levels of the same existence. And what happens is when you reach awareness with certain levels, you realize nature in a different way. Now, if you only realize nature from the lowest level, you are a part of her, basically, because you identify with her. Therefore, you are bound to cause and effect. You're bound to karma. You have no control over those things. You can only react. And therefore, you become an expression of them. One of the ways that in Sanskrit, they describe these different levels is through what's known as the tattvas, also known as the elements. That yellow square represents earth, the moon represents water, the triangle represents fire, the throat area that represents air, and at the top is akasha. You'll find that these also line up with the chakra points. Now the reason that I'm bringing this up is that these represent different expressions of, they, these represent different levels of awareness of the expressions of reality. Like I said at the very bottom, on the physical plane, you're only aware of the five senses. You're only aware of nature, and you can only react to her. 
But the higher up you go, the closer you get to ultimate consciousness. And what happens at that level of ultimate consciousness is that time begins to resolve in itself. Like I mentioned before, everything that's expressed in nature has a beginning and an end. When you raise your awareness to the level of Akasha, that's when you start to refine your awareness of a reality where beginning and end are in its potential state. The more that you're able to maintain an awareness of that experience, the more refined your awareness becomes. Now you're able to actually perceive the soul. Now you're able to start being able to perceive what we've been looking for. The soul is inorganic, and most of the spirits and energies that we deal with are inorganic. Everything that's organic is a part of nature, and it's actually lifeless. It doesn't have life, but life uses the organic world in order to play out its beginning, middle, and end, its cause and effect. So here's the thing, there's different levels of experience. This is why out-of-body experience is so important. This is why lucid dreaming and astral travel and all these different things are so important. It's not just something fun to do, and it's not an end in itself. Just like the transcendental meditations, astral projection, lucid dreaming, and all those things are designed to give you an experience of yourself being more than just the organic body. You don't know that you're more than the body unless you experience it. You can repeat it and hear people say it, but you have to know it for yourself. You do this through meditation. You can also do this through learning how to do lucid dreaming and astral projection. Because just think about it. The more that you spend time lucid dreaming, the more you start to train your unconscious that, you know what? Maybe what I am is more than just the body. Because when you're dreaming, you're not the body. You're at a different state of awareness. And the more that you're able to exercise deliberate control in these states, guess what? That begins to translate into your everyday waking state. And at that point, you start to express what's known as cities. And the yoga books talk about the different cities. S-I-D-D-H-I. The important thing is to understand that, yes, there is a body, yes, there is a mind, and yes, there are even feelings, but that's not what you are. That's not what you are. You're aware of those things, but those things don't define what you actually are. It, it cannot, because they're limited in their expression. They have a beginning and an end. That's the main part that I'm saying. If it has a beginning and an end, it's not, it's not soul. It's not the soul. It's just a part of nature, and everything physical... And so you can't, This what I'm going to say, somebody actually got offended. I don't know how, but this is only true to you if you're able to expand yourself to see it the way that it is. And what that is, is all of the material plane is one object. Did you hear that? All of the material plane is one object. So that means there's not a tree over here. There's not a woman over here and a man over here. All, the, all these physical expressions are one pliable medium. Now consciousness expresses itself through that medium. And those expressions have a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's what OM is about. Right? That's why we meditate on OM. Because that is the ultimate pattern of that beginning, middle, end expression that consciousness does through nature the seed the full tree and then it making fruit to repeat the process personal peace and greetings personal says i am that exactly that's why the four mahavakyas are so crucial to this level of understanding the four mahavakyas are four sayings that are to be meditated upon when your mind and your body reach a level of stillness and one of them is i am higher consciousness you are that now when you meditate on that it becomes very difficult to see enemies and obstacles and problems and threats because you ultimately realize i am higher consciousness you are that it's the same thing just expressing itself in a 
different way. Now, if you identify as a physical body on the physical plane with a very limited existence, of course you can't believe that. You're going to say, oh, Trav, that's not true. These people are out here trying to hurt us, and we got to fight back, and we got to do this. No. No. Because if you were really the spiritual practitioner that you claim to be on the internet, then you'd understand that what you actually are is extended and expanded beyond your limited condition. Do the work. Then you'll realize that. It's not my opinion. It's not how I feel. It's not my truth. It is. It just is what it is. But you, like again, like I said, you only see that once you begin to be still and perceive what is not the soul, which is everything else. Right? All objectivity exists for subjectivity. Everything expressed exists for the unexpressed. And it's people say that, oh, Earth is a school and we come here to learn. Well, in a way, that's very true. Now, there's not a we. There's only one consciousness. But through matter and through energy, one consciousness comes to know itself. The universe is an expression of ultimate consciousness. So they are tied together and linked. But here's the thing. Matter is nothing without consciousness. You see that when people die and when things die. Matter is nothing without consciousness. However, consciousness is eternal. And it also isn't doing anything. It just is. So that means there's nothing that you can achieve or attain to become liberated. You literally have to release things to become liberated. You have to release things to become liberated. You don't attain anything. You don't get any accolades. You don't get any uh, diplomas or certificates from a, a, a guru like there's nothing that you can get in this world of expression that's going to lead you to liberation directly liberation is a state of mind that you come to understand that what you identified with previously is not what you are now again like I said there are different levels and I'm gonna make this quick because this is uh, I, I can literally talk forever about this but you've got stuff to do today or so you think the main criteria of that liberation, you, you know, so you want something to, to aim for, right? You want something to look forward to, maybe something to strive for to know you're doing it right? Well, here it is. The main criterion for liberation is to maintain a state of wakefulness during deep sleep. I talked about lucid dreaming and astral projection, all that stuff. It's not just something cool to do to talk about on the internet. There's a reason for it. And these things have been practiced just as long as everything else that I've talked about here. Right? There are Vedic texts that teach how to do lucid dreaming properly. It's called the dream yoga. Right, So the whole point of doing these practices and perfecting these practices of lucid dreaming and astral projection and things like that is so that you can refine your awareness to be able to carry it into that state of being unconscious. So if you want something to strive for, strive for that. Do your meditations to learn how to become aware of your soul without needing stimulation from the body. Learn how to become aware in deep sleep. Why, Trav? Why? See, I've got, I've got to let you know where I'm coming from so you don't think I'm just making this stuff up so I can sound deep. I don't need to sound deep. Everything that comes out of my mouth at this point, really, is this ancient science, and it's already deep in itself. I didn't make it up. I'm just sharing the message that I received that helped me. So here's the thing. We've got four different levels of our consciousness. The first one is waking state, being awake. That's us walking around in this body, doing stuff, right? The second state is dreaming, right? That's the second level of your consciousness. Because remember that pole that I gave you? At the top is consciousness. At the bottom is matter, energy, expression. This is organic. It is also lifeless. Its natural state is inert. I talked about this in my last live. The natural state of matter is inertia, death. It doesn't, it's just like a pliable Play-Doh waiting to be handled and mashed and molded by consciousness, which contains all potential pattern for expression. Those are the two ends of the pole, right? At the very lower end of the spectrum, your awareness is being awake. 
Now, as you gradually travel upward, the next level is dreaming. In dreams, you're not manifested in tangible concrete reality, but it's somewhat of an in-between state because there's form, right? There's form there. That form is still an expression of consciousness, but it's still an illusion. Just like the physical reality is an illusion, the dream is an illusion as well. But the more you practice lucid dreaming, you can start to learn how to become, to remain your, retain your awareness and work with that state of consciousness. Now, after you practice that, the next state is deep sleep without dreams. I believe it's called theta state, maybe, I don't know. But there's a level after dreams that is deep sleep without dreams. Now, this is the level where a lot of us have made it to because we practice meditation so frequently we're training our awareness to remain conscious in these levels. There's stillness. There's nothing going on. But if you attain your awareness, you really start to realize that there's more to life than what the five sen what the limited five senses pick up. And of course, there's the final fourth level, which is pure transcendental consciousness, which is what we're trying to reach in the first place, or what we're trying to become aware of in the first place. Now notice I'm choosing my words carefully. What we're trying to become aware of, because it's always there. It is the natural default state of consciousness. It's operating in the background of everything. This is when I said earlier, everything has a soul. It's just that everything isn't aware of its soul. So if you're able to take your awareness to that level, you automatically bring it back to the waking state. Now here's the illusion. Some people think that, oh, once you become enlightened, it lasts forever. Not really. You have to get used to maintaining that state. I had a beautiful vision when I reached it last night. And it was simply, I laid down and for the whole duration, I saw almost like this explosion of just it was like, I don't know, a cloud of rainbow color, but it wasn't color. It was just unfolding out of itself, just eternally flowing and flowing and flowing. That was my whole dream state for the whole six hours. And it was beautiful. It was wonderful. And I didn't, I couldn't translate anything directly, but it was, everything was in it. It's very different, very difficult to explain. But when you, when you, when you tap into those levels, you're there. And you can bring it back with you, but you've got to practice maintaining that. That's why we practice. But this is what I'm saying. The, the main key is to retain your awareness in those deep levels of sleep because that is the ultimate consciousness that is constantly expressing itself through nature. When you're able to see at that level, a lot of the illusion naturally falls away because you see right through it. I am the higher consciousness. You are that. You start to see it. <sighs> I hope that makes sense. Because honestly, those first three layers of being awake, dreaming, and deep sleep without dreams, those belong to Prakriti. Those are all property of nature. Those aren't yours. It's not even you. The waking state, the dream state, and dreamless sleep that is all Prakriti. That is all nature. Consciousness is that fourth level. And this is why I brought up the four worlds of Kabbalah, because it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Asaya, the world of Asaya, that's the waking state. That's the tangible physical world. The world of Yetzirah, that's, that's the dreaming state. Or at least, if you're going to be working in that state, that's where you do it. It starts at imagination and it ends at the dream. The next world of Bria, that's the unconscious state of no dreaming. This is described as the archangels who don't have free will, so to speak, but they're literally just functions of the universe. The thing about the world of Bria is that they, the consciousness there exists somewhat individually, but it isn't aware of its individuality. It's almost as if Let's say God has created all these angels, but the angels are actually skins and suits that he uses to do things, right? Like say Fortnite. I have a collection of skins that I bought over years. 
they're all me though. They're not independent. It's just me playing through the skins. The world of Bria is the world of the archangels, and they're the different functions of the universe. And that represents that third level of consciousness, which is deep sleep without dreaming. All three of those belong to Prakriti because all three of those are individualized form. That fourth level of pure transcendental consciousness, that belongs to Purusha. That belongs to the unexpressed realm. So that's the work. That's the ladder of lights that we're climbing. We're leading up to that point to truly realize who and what we are which is nothing in Prakriti. Who and what we are is nothing in the expressed, tangible, physical realm. Okay? All right. So again, everything that you're striving to do, all the things that you're collecting, all these books that I have laid out over here, all the videos I made, all that stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All that matters is me getting to the point that I truly understand that all this stuff is an illusion. And what I mean by illusion, that doesn't mean it's not real, because obviously it's it's real on some level of awareness, right? We both still have to pay bills, right? We both still have to go get something to eat. So it is real. It's just that the illusion means that we misunderstand why we have to do these things or how these things operate. Let me know if you understand what I'm saying here or if I sound like a rambling madman. Either way, I don't care, but I know I'm getting absolutely closer to that which I've been trying to see. And to be honest, I hope that you are too. Because there's so much time wasted running around in circles of just being entertained on the internet. I mean, yeah, it gets you through the day, but why are you watching my stuff? Why are you buying these books? Why are you trying to meditate if, if you're not actually looking for your soul? When Bobby Hammond said this shit is over, he saw that there's no point in running around in circles. It's done. There's nothing new up under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. And the sooner you come to realize that, the sooner you will stop being distracted by the nonsense. Look, next week, somebody else is going to slap somebody on the stage. Next week, there's going to be some other government political... I've been saying this for years. You've been seeing this for years. There's going to be some natural disaster. There's going to be some kind of pandemic. It keeps repeating. That's not the truth. That's meant to keep you distracted. That is nature trying to keep hold of you. It's not a group of evil white men in suits somewhere making plans to, do, to enslave you in a machine. Even if so, what? All of matter is one thing. And you know what? If that type of stuff is allowed to exist, then obviously higher consciousness wills it so so who are you to say this ain't right this is evil we gotta stop the illuminati you don't even know who you are to say let's stop the illuminati you don't even know who the illuminati is right there's nothing to do like what personal said nothing else to do down here nothing else to do now look that doesn't mean i'm not gonna write a book that doesn't mean i'm not gonna go speak at the conference that doesn't mean i'm gonna stop making youtube videos that doesn't mean i'm gonna stop reading but I understand I don't have to do it. See, before I thought I had to do it. I don't have to do it. God lives in you. Consciousness, ultimate consciousness, Purusha, whatever you want to call it, right? There's not a, oh, Allah, and oh, Yahweh, and oh, oh, shoot. No. Once you get past those levels of differentiation, like I said, you reach the Akasha level. And what happens is, when you reach that Akasha level, all expressions resolve into one seed. That's why Akasha is designed as a black seed. That's what looks like a black egg. Because it's the origination point of everything else. Everything starts there. So once you get to that level, you'll come to realize whatever you call God, that seed is in you. You wouldn't be here without that. You wouldn't be expressed if there wasn't a seed for you to be, to, to be expressed. But the thing to realize is it's expressed through nature. You're the seed. You're not nature. Okay. So I, I say also with what Bobby Hemmett said, this shit is over. It's over. That's not something to be scared of. And that's not something that you throw your hands up and give up. Ah, oh, this shit is over. There's no point. No. No, not out of fear. Not out of not out of fear. 
you come to understand that there's nothing you can do that can bring you enlightenment. You literally have to just realize it. Now one of the best ways to do that is to sit in stillness. Because like I said before, meditation is coming into an awareness of your soul. And what is your soul? Well, the soul is something that hasn't been expressed. So if you can identify it, it is not the soul. So you have to sit still. And what happens also is when you go into meditation, you enter that Akasha level because time resolves back into itself. Remember what I said? There's no expression of time at the Akashic level because for something to be expressed in time means it has a beginning and an end. It's temporary. At the Akashic level, everything is resolved back into its potential state. And if it's in a potential state, it isn't born yet. There's no time. You see that level when you meditate. You reach that level because what you're doing when you meditate also is you're going past that dream level into the dreamless sleep level. You're becoming like the archangels of Bria who don't have a will and don't do anything because they are God. They're not individual angels floating around waiting for you to call on them. They're just different aspects of God perceived from a lower level. If this is all about levels too now. Us looking up, we're going to see all these angels and all their powers. But if you were at the top level looking down, you would understand that these are just my arms, my legs, my eyes, my ears, my nose, my lips, my tongue. <sighs> okay, I think I got the message out, and I hope that it was received. Happy birthday, Julie. I hope you're having a great day. For real, for real. So just, just understand, if, if you're feeling like depressed and hopeless and oh there's nothing to do and what's the point of life understand that you're feeling that way because you are so attached to matter and memories you can start over you can start over you don't have to suffer you don't have to suffer you don't have to suffer Jay Gallo says she had a rainbow cloud dream as well Look, there's something moving in these layers that's affecting a lot of us right now. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. That dream was so profound to me. Like, I had never experienced nothing like that in my life. At least that I remember. And I tried to tell somebody about it. And she's just like, oh yeah, cool. Well, anyways, da 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 But I understand. That, you know, what, what's she supposed to say? Oh, please tell me more. Right? What's she supposed to say? It was for me. And apparently for you. Be good to yourself. You don't have to suffer. You really don't. I mean that. Okay. Okay. And, and you know, I usually say greetings and hello to everybody, but, um, you know, I just had to get that out. So, again, I hope that you're having a great day. I hope that you can just, just take some time to think about what I said and apply it to your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, figure out how it makes sense to you. Don't let it just be this distant thing that some dude on the internet said. Find out how, if it's, if it's actually true, don't even take my word for it, right? Don't even believe it because I said it. Go look into it. Test it out. Society Ejects says, yep, when I was meditating yesterday, I saw like fireworks with no color, if that makes sense. I'm telling you, something was going around. It might still be going around. I don't know. If you jump into meditation, maybe you'll see if it's still going around. I love life. I love it. it I, I used to not be able to say that, but I can say it loud and proud. I love life. Life is good. And I'm extremely grateful to have come to the levels of realization that I've come to. I'm extremely grateful to have learned what I've learned. I'm, I'm grateful to the teachers that gave their time and their effort studying and communicating their message through time. I'm, I'm grateful. So happy and grateful. I'm grateful to Bobby Hammett because, honestly, he took the path that I was on and turned it 90 degrees, right? The same way that the upper triad of the Tree of Life is 90 degree turn from the rest of the tree. Hint, hint. That means you stepped onto a different path. 
you know, I'm, I'm grateful for, for Bobby Hammett. I'm grateful for Swami Niranjan Ananda Saraswati. I'm grateful for Dion Fortune, right? And I'm grateful for all of you guys, especially those of you who communicate and give feedback because I learn from you. I learn from you. I'm not this master brain with all the knowledge. No, there's so many different things that I've come into a realization of because the comments and the conversations that we've had, right? So I'm grateful to be able to sit up here and have 26, 30 of y'all on this stream. You know, I, I appreciate the hearts. I appreciate the comments. I'm grateful for you, especially because now you're my teachers, right? I read books, but I learn actively from conversations and, and comments with you all. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Life is good. Life is good. I'm grateful for my son who's over there grumpy because he's not playing Oculus. I'm grateful for my baby mama. I've learned so much through our relationship. Find gratitude. That's how you win. That's another way to get out of depression, by the way. Rira Man asks, how do we meditate, Trav? Well, the important thing is to train yourself to sit still. Write it down, take yourself five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but make a commitment that you're gonna sit down for that time. You're not gonna check the watch, set an alarm. Train your body first to sit still. While you're sitting still, you don't have to do anything fancy. You don't have to dream of colors and shapes and chakras. There's different types of meditations. For the To learn how to meditate, just sit still and pay attention to your breathing in and out. Don't breathe special. Just pay attention. Become aware. You're refining your awareness. That's what I said. At the end level, you want to have an awareness so refined that you can see the soul in everything. That you can see God in everything. It takes a refined awareness. Like I said earlier, I don't know if he was here, but people that taste wine. Have you tasted wine? When you sip when you throw back that, that cup of red wine or white wine, do you taste the subtle notes of cranberry? Do you taste the, the, the oak wood that it was aged in, right? Can you taste the thyme in it? Do you taste those little, the notes of the, the, the nuts and the berries that's used? No, you probably just throw it back and enjoy the tipsy moment. But people with a refined taste, they're able to pull all that out. They taste all that in the wine. They taste all that in the coffee. They, they swirl it around the glass. They look at the consistency of it the viscosity of the water on the glass. They sip it back, they swirl it around their tongue. Oh yeah, this is probably about 60 years old. Tastes like it came from California. You know what I'm saying? It takes a refinement of taste. Likewise, when you meditate, sit still, pay attention to your breath. You're refining your awareness to detect what is subtle, what is behind the expression. That's what you're doing. So sit still, pay attention to your breath, Learn to still your mind. You're going to become aware of all these thoughts jumping around and bouncing around. Ideas and things you should have done, could have done, would have done. Let those pass. Don't try to block them. Don't try to stop them. Just become aware. I know it doesn't sound like you're doing much, but you're doing something massive. You're starting your soul on the path of being seen. You can't see it yet. But eventually with practice, you'll be able to see it. Then you'll be able to see it in dreams. Then you'll be able to see it in deep sleep. Then you'll be able to see it forever. And once it's seen, it cannot be unseen. My favorite uh, example is like, you could be chilling in your room. Oh, and don't let it be bedtime, right? You're chilling in the bed. And you, you look up on the wall and you see a big ass spider, right? Ooh. Let's say you turn maybe to grab a shoe or something. And you look back and it's gone. You can't unsee that. You're not going to just lay back down and go to sleep peacefully. No. Once it has been seen, it cannot be. Everything has changed. Everything has changed from that point. Right? Hey. Likewise, with the soul. Once you witness levels and layers of the beauty of what the soul actually is, everything has changed. There. That, that's how you start. Steph2738 asks, what food do you eat on the daily if you don't mind me asking? Well, to be honest, I don't eat much. Um, sometimes I forget to. But um, when I do, I mean, I pig out like Goku. <laughs> um, I don't know. 
I, I like uh, to make burrito type stuff and spaghetti. I like pesto and I post it on my stories sometimes. But mostly non-meat. Right now I'm on a fast, so um, definitely no meat. I'm fasting in preparation for my book and also for the lecture that I'm doing June the 6th in Atlanta. So we were sold out, which is crazy. But I'm pretty sure he said that they, um, because we sold out, they expanded the venue. So now we have more seats. So I'm going to have to double check. But I think that there are still, there's still now tickets to come see us in Atlanta in June. I'll have to double check. I'll make a post on that. But yeah, I'm just rolling through the comments here just to see if anyone had a question or anything like that. But yeah, this was uh, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Alright, alright. So, that's that. That's that. I hope you got to catch the information. I'm logging off now because everything that had to be said was said. Like I said before, there's nothing that you have to do for liberation. When we say do the work, do the work is about taking the past seriously and undergoing the contemplation of these concepts, right? Because you didn't have these concepts in your head yet. It's not enough to listen to me talk, not enough to listen to anybody else talk. It's not enough to read the book. You have to sit there and digest it, contemplate it allow it to sink in as you do that your awareness begins to expand to different possibilities of what is actually real and what is not the more that you do that you start to understand hmm maybe there's patterns at play because I keep seeing recurring patterns maybe I'm not the physical body maybe there's more to me than just the physical body what is that part of me that is unexpressed what is that part of me that, that carries my awareness into the dreams? What is that part of me that is aware during meditation? What is that part of me that seems to just arrange life for me in a perfect way? What is that? Where do I find, how do I find it, right? When you begin to contemplate these concepts, you get closer to the answer, which is that is what you actually are. It's not expressed, it's, it's in its potential state. But you have to contemplate in order to understand that. That's what do the work means. Do the work means getting to that level of becoming aware of the subtle aspect of yourself. And the more that you do that, reality begins to change. Just like when you see that spider on the wall, you turn and you look back and it's gone. And now you're not comfortable anymore. Reality has changed. The spider was there long before you saw it. And he will be there long after you leave likewise with the soul Anunnaki 17 says in our prayers that levels can be good for individual has been so even in white blood cells our immunologic defenders eat and destroy bacteria more efficiently right on life path king says I recently went through narcissist abuse and to get back to me is so hard yeah and you know, I'm, I'm glad that that is over, and I'm glad that you're able to step back and analyze it from a different angle. Because see, before it was so hard to see because you're in the thick of it. But now that you're out of it, you can look back on it and start to understand what some of the causes may have been within yourself. Because yeah, we can say, we can blame the other person and say they did this to me. And they did. But when you you can't do anything about that what you can do something about are the causes within yourself that may have led you into that relationship what were you seeking in a person to attract that kind of person and how can you adjust yourself to ensure that it doesn't happen again better yet how do you give yourself what you were trying to get out of that relationship contemplation will help you with that don't just jump into another relationship contemplate why the cause the effect okay all right all right 
So I'm leaving. KRS SO says, How do I see my soul? Came in a little late. Yeah, gotta meditate, gotta sit still, and you gotta spend time with it. Like I said before multiple times in this video, it's about refinement of your awareness. If your awareness isn't refined, you're not gonna be able to see it. I use another example, just like a painter. If you set out a bunch of different blues and greens, if you're not a, a, a color enthusiast, all you're gonna see is dark blue, light blue, dark green, regular green. But a person who is an artist or his very refined taste of color, they're gonna point out the aqua foam, the sea foam, the lima bean green, right? They're gonna see all the different little tiny minute granular differences. You've got to have that kind of awareness to be able to perceive what the soul is, or rather what the soul is not, neti neti. So the more that you understand about your five sense experience and the fact that it is an expression of something